Oh, I want to believe that's true, and you're not going to tell me otherwise. I don't even care if Bill Murray tells me. I'm not going to believe it. Frank trying to get to trying to get the audience in the movie theater to participate was entirely ad libbed by Murray. I'm pretty sure most of that last that speech is ad libbed. Uh yeah, it had to be because he kept flubbing lines yeah. and, ma- and repeating the same thing over and over again. That had to be just him. That which entire was great. That kind of like mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that entire speech for the most part. I'm sure he had like maybe notes that he had to hit, but I'm pretty sure that was just all him. Yeah, it sounds like it must have been. Um yeah. I can't imagine... Because he stops. Like you said, he stops and he stalls and he... Mm-hmm. And he repeats some things. And it's yeah. just... Yeah, it just sounds like a heartfelt speech, basically. So I think that, you know, that sounds about right to me. Uh, the production was rife with conflict between Murray and Donner. In a 1990 interview with uh, Roger Ebert, when where he asked Murray if he had any disagreement with Donner, Murray replied, only a few, every single minute of the day. Uh, he said that Scrooge could have been a really, really great movie. The script was so good. He, Donner, kept telling me to do things louder, louder, louder. I think he was deaf. Uh, That's what Bill Murray had to say. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, In a later 1993 interview, Murray and Donner had different visions of the type of film that Scrooge uh, would become, adding that there was potentially only one take in the finished film that was his. I don't... I'm guessing... Donner basically didn't have control over anything and just said, okay, Bill, it's your movie. Do what you want to do. Because it's this Bill Murray. Because it's Bill Murray and you don't tell him no. But that's not a good thing for a director and it's not like Richard Donner's... Wouldn't be the first the time, boat. won't be the last time. Yeah. I'm just saying maybe somebody shouldn't have been on the movie. Hey, we should just be happy that they made a movie as good as it. Because usually when that happens, the movie is terrible. Oh, I agree. Um, we can point to Cop Out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which was the, all I thought in my head as soon as I was reading that. I was like, yep, that sounds about right with some people. Uh, Murray described the experience as having a fair amount of misery and said, that's a tough one. I still have trouble talking about it. Hmm. Well, that kind of sucks. Um, describing working on a dusty, smelly, smoky set, feeling alone, and even coughing up blood to the due to the fake snow that was being used. I don't know. Merry um, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> He also admitted to feeling pressure from being a solo star of the film compared to previous productions like Ghostbusters, as he was on set mostly every day, where some actors would make brief cameos requiring only one or two days of work. That, to me, sounds like that's what it is. Just nerves of, this is my first movie, I can't fuck it up. That's The the funny thing about Bill Murray is that... He was the star of everything, even though it was an ensemble piece? Like, with that, yeah, but, like, there's not too many movies where, like, big, big movies like this where he's just kind of him. Um. It's like this, Groundhog Day. Um. You know what I mean? Everything else is a. What about Bob? Yeah. Although, I guess. But then you're you're next to Richard Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus, yeah. So. You know what I mean, though? Not, Not that I'm, like. Be littling Karen Allen or Andy McDowell or no no know. no, but all of those they they know that they're supporting characters. Um, this is Bill Murray's movie. Um, I'm sure there's more that we're definitely forgetting, and I'm sure one day we'll get to I'm them. But bigger one, you know, yeah. There's but, like short change or whatever, you know, like smaller films. Yeah, <laughs> uh, quick change, quick I mean, change. That movie's yeah. fucking yeah. awesome. No, and uh, we'll get that. that. But no, that's an ensemble piece. Yeah, that is an yeah. ensemble piece. I think maybe that's just not what he wanted to do. Uh, maybe he was just like, yeah. Well, again, we go back to the nerves of it all. Like, yeah. I don't want to be the star of the show. I mean, to be fair, this movie didn't do all that well, and I don't think Groundhog Day did either. I mean, of course, they're looked back on fondly now, but I don't think they did At all that time, well when they were initially out. So yeah. maybe that's why he's like, I'm better in an ensemble, because that's kind of all he does now, especially. Rather be the big fish in the small pond of Exactly. Like... You know, be and, the standout yeah. of the group. I mean, the small fish the in the big pond, because, yeah. you know, we got, like, an ensemble. Mm-hmm. And just be the MVP of it, instead yeah. of, like, being the... The only one. The star of the show. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Donner himself said that he had never worked with, with Marie before and met up with him for drinks before accepting the project to see if they would get along. They did. The director was more positive about their relationship, describing Murray as a superbly creative but occasionally difficult as difficult as any actor. That's just actors, though, right? Yeah, Isn't and it? that's the thing. Yeah, but I mean, like, Richard Donner doesn't seem to have that much uh How many Ill actors will. are, like, a... Like a, a diva? A, a, a no, no, I mean, like, yeah. there's far, that list is far more longer than yes. the actors that are just a peach to work with. Yeah, yeah. All the way mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. Because eventually, 
whether it's at the mm. beginning, middle, or end, eventually, I'm sure all actors and directors or producers all kind of butt heads because you're, yeah. you know, you're well, surrounded by each other for three to six to nine months at the a time. Best, the best description I ever heard from it, um, ironically, also came from Kevin Smith, where he basically said, he's like, especially for actors, actors live in a world of no. So when you start as an actor, you're constantly going on auditions and you're constantly being told that this is wrong, you're not good enough, this is not good enough, you, whatever is no, 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 no. And then finally, if you become successful, it's a fucking world of yes. And then some people can't handle that, and they just go fucking nuts. Yeah. And that's sort of... And, and every actor has a little bit of that nuts in them. It depends on how degree you go, but it does go. Because, you know, there are some actors who are so fucking huge that... And this is a literal quote from an episode of his podcast where he's just like... An actor can walk into somebody's in a studio's office and like take a shit on the guy's desk and be like, "Oh, oh, that's just awesome. I'm gonna let that dry and let that sit on my desk as a paperweight." Meanwhile, after when they leave, like, "Oh, fuck that guy." But you know, there yeah. are some people that just can go that ape shit insane. Except for like maybe Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah, Tom Hanks is the exception that proves every rule. So because let's Hanks, just say they got the perfect human to play I've, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I've always said about Tom Hanks that Tom Hanks has banked up enough love. That he could kill a nun, and people would ask what the nun did to him. I think I've come to that point that that's how to- how good Tom Hanks has gotten at this point. Um, Surprised we haven't got there yet with him, but oh, we will. we will. I mean, he's got a massive oeuvre that spans so much. We'll get there. I mean, there's a lot of movies in these two decades that we can cover, so don't worry, we're fine. Dragnet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where we're, I, I want to start there. Actually, uh, Donner said that Murray was always. Uh, in a working mind, uh, sorry, a working mindset on set, believing it made him tired, so the crew would do silly things to improve morale. And like fucking juggle, like, like I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem like anything else. Um, like court jester style. I don't know why like... I kept that in there because there's nothing else uh, to that story. Wow, oops. I apologize for putting that in there. Um, I think I meant to delete it and just never got around to it. I'm tired, folks. Toy Story Christmas. Deal with it. Uh, Donner had not worked with an improvisational comedian like Murray before, who ad-libbed many of his lines saying, you don't direct him, you pull him back. Which fair. is a fair description. Fair. Um, so, the legacy of this film, and it does have one. Um, the film's marketing made references to Murray's role in Ghostbusters with taglines including, Bill Murray is back among the ghosts, only this time it's three against one. That's just stupid. That's um, just Hollywood being a... Yeah, some asshole wrote that on a Friday. <laughs> no wonder this movie didn't do all that well. Jesus like, I gotta Christ. get out of here. Mm-hmm. That ghost, there's mm-hmm. three of them, there's one of him. Fuck it, yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Um, pre-release audience screening in summer of 1988 were positive, with 93% of those surveying the film as very good. <laughs> Which I'm shocked by. Mm-hmm. Being shown rating. a Christmas movie in the summertime, most people would just be turned off completely yeah. by that. It's the highest rating the Paramount Pictures had ever received at the time. Uh, press screenings nearer to release, however, were met with r- responses ranging from ovations to disgruntlement. Those are night and day. <sighs> Here we go. Um, so, Roger Ebert called it one of the most disquieting, unsettling films to come along in quite some time, saying that it portrays pain and anger more than comedy, giving it one out of four stars <laughs> when he reviewed it. <laughs> Um, when he interviewed Bill Murray for the film Quick Change, that review came up in a conversation, which went like this. Bill, how do you plan to explain your one-star review of Scrooged? Roger, I was hoping it wouldn't come up. Bill, it wasn't that bad. It had some good stuff in it. Watch it on video and you'll see. Roger, it just didn't work for me. Bill, I thought maybe you had some inside information you know about an unhappy set or something which led into that Mm -hmm. um, thing later on, or earlier on. Roger, no, it just didn't seem that funny. So That's because it wasn't initially a comedy, Mr. Ebert. Um, Were you expecting, because Bill Murray was in it, it was going to be a... Laugh out loud? Like a LOL fest of just slapstick buffoonery? No, it had some comedy, but it was also very serious and heartfelt. Do you see the end where he sees his own death in maybe the most brutal way I've ever seen that? Yeah. Um, I was a kid who watched... That scene haunts children's fucking (laughs) I gotta tell you, I was a kid... I was a kid who watched a metric fuck ton of horror movies when I saw this movie, and this scene bothered me. Right? It is disturbingly well done. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not... For a comedy. You know, know what I mean? 
Um, so yeah, maybe temper your expectations. Yeah. The Hollywood Reporter said of the film, Scrooge features wickedly amusing flashbacks, but also some overwrought comic misfires. Where? Where did it misfire? Comic misfires? I don't know where it misfired, because all the comic beats in my head were great. Yeah, anytime they tried to be funny, it succeeded. Yeah. Maybe they were. Maybe it's one of those things where they thought something was meant to be funny and it wasn't. I guess. I don't and know. And they're like, "Ooh, that didn't go." Well, maybe off it's as just. Funny. Maybe it's just because Bill Murray and like, "Oh, Bill Murray, he's a laugh riot, and he's doing serious things." And they're like, "That wasn't funny." Well, no, it wasn't supposed to be. I, Why aren't you making me laugh, clown really, man? It really does seem like it comes to that. No. Um, of course, modern takes have labeled it a Christmas classic. Uh, Entertainment Weekly called it the most underrated Christmas classic, and the Boston Globe said that the film was ahead of its time, which allowed it to remain relevant years later. Murray considered himself rusty. He described the success of the film as a phenomenon that would forever be his biggest success, compounded by the failures of The Razor's Edge, made him feel radioactive, and resulted in him avoiding making movies temporarily. Okay. Again, um, he just... He's weird about himself, right? Yeah. He's... Trust me, a lot of actors are weird about themselves. Yeah, again, world of no. Yeah. Um, on this movie, he said in a 1989 interview, we shot a big, long, sloppy movie describing how a lot of filmed content was not present in the film's final cut. The final cut of the film runs uh, 97 minutes. I want to know what they fucking cut out because he seems to think that there was a lot of shit that should have been in there. Yeah. I like to know what movie he <laughs> thought he was making because... It seems like no one knew what they were doing. Yeah. It really does seem that way. It's very strange. <clears throat> All right. From get... all of, from his account, from Dick Donner's, from mm-hmm. everyone's account, it's just like this movie should have been a fucking disaster. Mm-hmm. So it this wasn't. is a movie <laughs> should that should not have worked. But I think you had enough talented people involved that they were able to scrape something together. And what they scraped together is a goddamn Christmas classic. So I don't know. Jesus, um, what do you like on a good day then? <laughs> well, <laughs> Ghostbusters and Superman. I so guess, I'm guessing fair you did kind of get the two right people to do this yeah. kind of thing. <clears throat> All right, so let's get sad for and weird for a minute, shall we? Um, following b- the breakup of the band The New York Dolls, bassist Arthur Kane had fallen on hard times, envious of the success of his fellow bandmates. Kane was in his apartment watching the film uh, when he saw his bandmate David Johansson's appearance on screen as the Ghost of Christmas Past. This pushed him over the edge and resulted in him attempting suicide by jumping out a third-story apartment window. Although a planter box partially broke his fall, the impact caused slight neural damage and affected his speech. Yeah. Because of this movie. I don't know. Also, you know, drugs. <clears throat> well, clearly. Punk rocker um, in the 70s, right? <laughs> New York Dolls, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was definitely... Uh, 70s, 80s, you know. There was definitely drugs. Um, yeah. Preston tells Frank that in America there are 27 million cats, 48 million dogs, and then says quite seriously that IBC needs to start generating program towards them. As of 2015, there were and are several dog and cat specific channels on Roku that supply dedicated pet programming based on scientific studies of what interests them. Ahead of its time. So somebody actually took him seriously. Ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. Um... A DVD version was scheduled for re-release on October 31st, 2006 as the You'll Love It edition. This version was to include commentary by Donner, on a set with Bill Murray, Murray's message from the Show West Exhibitors Convention, and other featurettes including The Look of Scrooge, Updating Ebenezer, Bringing the Ghost to Life, and the Christmas, uh, and Christmas to Remember. Although Paramount promoted the You'll Love It edition with images of a custom DVD case and a retail price as late as September of that year, it missed its release date and it remains unreleased. This reason, uh, the reason for this has not been disclosed. Hmm. I, I don't know why you've never done a special edition for this. There is no reason. Yeah. I just have some, like, bare bones Blu-ray. Scrooged was released on Blu-ray on November 1st, yeah. 2011. The release was the... criticized... For only including the film's theatrical trailer with uh, Collider's Phil Brown saying, there must be some incredible behind-the-scenes stories to tell. Yeah, that's the one I got. So that's why my notes were mostly about the legacy and not the film itself, because it it never surfaced. It just didn't come out. Well, when everyone on set thought they were making a disaster, why bother? Yeah, but that's the thing. It The stuff exists. Yeah, but do, you, never but, seen it. but do you want them on the behind the scenes? Because the mindset they sounded like they were in 
do you want like a miserable Mill Murray no, on set gotta, of the movie remember. going, oh yeah, we're making this uh, Christmas no, movie. No, no, you gotta remember when the cameras are on, everyone's upbeat and happy. No. When they're making the movie in some, in every, like hell, if, you, if you've ever seen behind the scenes footage of uh, 